welcome to the Live Your Best Marriage Podcast. I'm your host, Whitney Shio. And I'm your host, Bessa Shio. And this is the place where we believe that every marriage out there has a chance to be awesome and long-lasting. Yes, every marriage has a chance to be awesome and fulfilling. And as always, you guys can reach out to us on social media. I'm at Whitney Shio on Twitter. And I'm at Pesa Shio on Twitter. Also, you can like us on Facebook. Which is uh, Facebook forward slash Live Your Best Marriage. And of course, you can always go back to the place where it started, which is LiveYourBestMarriage.com forward slash blog. Oh, yeah. So what are we talking about today, Whitney? So first, we just wanted to remind everybody that this is a place for encouragement. And we always hope that we can be a source of inspiration and just be a resource to couples who might be going through a tough time. And oh, yeah. maybe you feel like you've tried everything. You tried buying gifts. You tried showing affection. Or you tried going for date nights and you're still stuck. It didn't work. So, and my question always is, well, what do you do then? What are we supposed to do when we feel like we've tried everything we can, but it still isn't working? Or is it even worth to continue trying? Or is it, uh, should we quit? Right, right. So... We are not counselors. We are just a real couple with real problems. And oh, yeah. Sometimes it's just nice to hear other people's stories and see that they've gone through it too and that you're not the only one. So what I would say is, uh -huh. yes, it is worth it to keep trying. It is totally worth it. And I think the only thing we're left with after we feel as though we've tried everything is just love. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just, just love. Love is all we have when we reach, you know, what feels like a breaking point. And love is the only thing strong enough to just hold it all together. So, and then when you say love, uh, are you talking about the, the, the selfless love where you are just giving, but you don't expect something in, re in return? I think love really says that no one is perfect, including myself, and I can afford to show some grace. I can afford to give this person a break. Okay. I think that's what, what love says. In marriage, a lot of times, it's just remembering that I shouldn't be seeking perfection. So you should not be seeking for perfection from yourself or from your spouse? From our spouse, because it can be really tough sometimes. You feel like oh my gosh, when is this going to get better? When are we going to be able to break through this communication wall that we have between us? Uh -huh. But all I can say is, really, love is the only thing you have left at the end of all of that because you just go through so many emotions and, and different feelings. And so that's really the best encouragement, the best advice anyway, that I but, could give. And to me, I like your advice because it tells me that, hey, um, at the end of it all, there is love. And when somebody is actually going through a tough time, they're trying to talk to their spouse and um, things are not working the way they thought, uh, there's always a feeling like, oh, now it's the best time to actually leave because um, things won't really work out. There's no need to stay. At that time, it's the best time to remind yourself that you are committed into this relationship and um, you are in here till death do us apart. And also, if one person feels as though they're trying harder mm -hmm. than the other person is, that can be a really, really challenging. And so what I would do if I was in that situation and I felt like 
I was the only one who was really, really trying to find a solution. And the other spouse was the one, well, I don't want to say messing up, but I think you get what I mean. The uh, other spouse <laughs> is is just just doesn't have the right attitude, maybe. <laughs> what I would do is I would I would ask myself, okay, if I was having a hard time, would I want someone to give me a break? Oh yeah. If I was, if the roles were reversed, that's no, what I mean. You know, when the roles were, if the roles are reversed, um, you know, we tend to understand where we are coming from. We tend to see our point better. So when the roles are reversed, we'll be expecting that somebody will see where we are coming from because we were in the situation and we um, understand where we are coming from. But when you mean as an individual, as an individual. So yeah. if, if the roles were reversed. And let's say I'm not giving you a break. But if the roles were reversed and I, I would be expecting that you will give, be giving me a break because I understand where I came from. I understand myself. So I'm very, uh, is it objective? When it comes to myself. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to myself, I'm very objective. But when it comes to, no. No, it's the opposite. When it comes to you, the other person, I'm very obje objective. Mm -hmm. This is what was expected of you, and you did not meet the expectations. Mm -hmm. But when it, it's about me, that's when somebody becomes very subjective. They're like, yes, that was what was expected, mm -hmm. but there was other circumstances that came into the situation, so give me a break, right. if it makes sense, yeah. Yeah. And so I think the best place to start is just to go ahead and ask that question. If the roles were reversed, would I want someone to give me a chance? Yeah, the would, answer is yes. Would I want my spouse to be patient with me if I was the one not really appreciating the depth of the situation or if I was the one not as serious as what the situation calls for? I think but also even just the fact that we named our blog live your best marriage actually that's a that's what it means is live your best marriage not somebody else's yeah blog. not someone else's yes. mm -hmm. so because what works for others might not work for you and vice versa what works for you might not work for someone else yes so when we see all these pictures on Facebook of other couples and we just wish that we could keep up or mm -hmm. we wish that we were as happy as they are. And I do the quote thing because we never really know if they're as happy as they look. Yeah, we never know. And uh, they usually, when you're posting something on Facebook, you show your best. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but when I'm evaluating, the, when, I'm, when I'm looking at Facebook and I'm, I know my worst situation, so I'm looking at your best situation and I'm transposing it on my worst situation. And I'm like, how can it be that they are so happy? Well, I know my worst situation, mm -hmm. my worst fears, my just my imperfections. Mm -hmm. So I put it on top of it, of that and I'm like, my whole life should be as this perfect couple that I'm seeing on Facebook or Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to compare yourself to the things that you see. And it's it simply is just that. Live your best marriage. Whatever works for your family, Yes. go ahead and do that. Don't try to find a match out there with some other some other scenario, someone else's family, someone else's problems, someone else's solution. I mean, it's it's really nice mm -hmm. to, it's really helpful to get tips. Yes. But I think even here at Live Your Best Marriage, where when we do give tips, we just are throwing ideas out there. We're definitely not trying to provide a one-size-fits-all solution. Yes. Or, and I think really our main goal is just to be a source of encouragement. Yes, a source of encouragement. And yeah. uh, when you get the ideas from us, or if you pick some tips from us, you, 
it's not saying we, like you need you need to be rigid and just try mm-hmm. to apply that directly to your marriage. Yes, you can if you want to, but sometimes you, that can actually spark some creativity in you, and then you can use that as a foundation mm-hmm. in solving some of the problems that you're having in your marriage. So it's not just directly use this. We are not giving you a template to live your life. We are actually giving you ideas where you can spark some creativity in your mind. That way you can use that with your spouse and maybe solve some of the problems you are going through. Right. Exactly. That's exactly right. And also, it's we really want to be an inspiration. And what I mean by that is we want other couples out there to see that they're not the only ones who might be having issues yes or disagreements and we don't we just don't want that misconception to continue the one about people believing that well if you have a great marriage then you don't have disagreements okay or if you have disagreements that means you're fighting too much but yes. you can have a different opinion and it's still not a fight. No. You can have a disagreement without it turning into an argument. So But that needs a lot of uh, a lot of maturity because yeah. for a lot of folks we believe that if there's a disagreement that means we are as you had said it, we are not great and the fact that we are having a disagreement that means we are not um, soulmates or in sync. Right. With each other, which I totally disagree with. But others, we've met quite a few couples who think if they did not agree on everything, that means they are not meant to be. Right. And also going back to the question that we asked a few minutes ago of would I want the other person to give me a chance mm-hmm. if... <laughs> You know, if the roles were reversed. And so another thing we like to talk about in that aspect is just the fact that there is no exact puzzle piece out there for you. Yes. There's no, um, really, there's no perfect spouse Spouse. waiting for you after you get divorced. Oh. Because, and here at, at Live Your Best Marriage, we like to talk about the fact that compatibility really is not a major major issue can you say that again can you say that Mm -hmm. again you don't have to be 100% compatible so you're not a mirror image of each other no okay no and trust me you would rather be different (laughs) you would rather have opposing views you would rather because those are the things that make life interesting sometimes it might not feel interesting but the truth is, if you were exactly the same, it would it would be really boring. But the funny thing is, you would still fight. And you know, even, yeah, yeah, even if you had a lot of things in common and you feel like you're perfectly compatible, you would still you would still disagree. Oh, yeah. on some things. Oh yeah. So. And you know, is, is that um, I was reading on the paper the other day that there's a new trend. Maybe mm-hmm. I think I told you there's a new trend that's happening in America where. Actually, women, they, they said actually women, that they, it's called monogamy or whatever. Anyway, they are getting married to themselves. Yeah. What is that? I, I just call it marrying themselves. Okay, yeah, that. And they, were saying, <laughs> and they are saying that this marrying yourself... It's not funny. I shouldn't have laughed. It's funny. <laughs> like I don't see why so, you marry yourself. Yeah, so they ha- yeah they have the ring. They give themselves a ring. I I did see that article with a yes yes. I saw that. So uh, and they were saying that you're getting married to yourself because mm-hmm. you don't want to deal with the with uh, the opposing views of somebody else. Mm-hmm. You just want because uh, you don't have like you don't fight with yourself. Right. And you don't have to deal with another human being mm-hmm. telling you what to do. Yes. And. Because I view marriage as something that completes you, but they were viewing it as a hassle. So the best thing to do is you just love yourself, and because of self-love, mm-hmm. you go ahead and marry yourself. What do you think of that? And they can complete themselves. Yes. 
Well, when I first read that article, I I really felt bad. Mm -hmm. I really felt... I personally would not choose that route. You never marry yourself? I would not because I felt... You're not into yourself? I just think that would be a lonely way to live. I don't know. That's that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. I That's really how I looked at it. And then I heard... I think a pastor or someone else make a comment about it being selfish. Okay. Like they are just so self-absorbed that they can't, they don't even want to try to get along with a spouse. But I don't know. Selfishness wasn't even the first thing that came to my mind. Loneliness is is what I, was my first reaction to that. And I guess... So that's what I think. To answer your question, that's what I think. It would, it would not work for me. I, I would be really... You're more of a... I would not want to give myself a ring. I And then... I would not want to just be alone. So how are wedding. they having these weddings? Are they like going to a church? Are they having like... What kind of wedding? I don't, I don't know. I really so don't know. So they're standing in front of an altar by themselves? I really don't know. And I, somebody's actually marrying them? Or it's just... I, I, I didn't... The article that I saw didn't go that far into detail, but then one of my friends on Facebook Mm -hmm. said that she's going to make a promise to herself to not get hurt anymore. So that was why she's doing it. Oh, okay. So I guess there's just... Like hurt emotionally or physically? Well, probably, (laughs) probably emotionally, but... You see, this is a this is why you don't want to get married. I mean, <laughs> you see, he doesn't get it, right? <laughs> Everybody has probably their own view of it. Everybody has their own idea. But I, I just, to me, I view even just the word marriage. I view it as a union. You're bringing, you're bringing two, two people together. Okay. It's not, I don't, so I don't see how one by itself could have a union. So to me, a union of one, I wouldn't call it a marriage. It's maybe they can, you just stay single. Maybe that, yeah, single or maybe call it a commitment to yourself or something. But yeah, I wouldn't call it a marriage. I thought we are always committed to ourselves. The same way I hear people talk about open marriage. In my opinion, there, if it's that way, then there is no marriage Uh, because there's no commitment to anyone so okay and i guess they are saying it's marriage because they ha- there's a legal document that's called a marriage certificate mm-hmm. which they haven't gotten a divorce yet they're married but they're not keeping the commitment so i wouldn't really call it a marriage i wouldn't call it a marriage because it's it's everything else except ma- a marriage really. yeah yes yeah so so Okay, and um, you had brought up an issue um, a few days ago. You, I had you talk to some folks when you were talking mm-hmm. about like how Facebook now is able to track. Mm-hmm. Um, Facebook is able to track how you can get like when you're getting together. Mhm, mhm. Oh yeah, Facebook. I don't know if it was Facebook who released the study, but. Someone did a study where in the first 100 days, Mm -hmm. when a relationship is about to start, so when two people are cheating on the relationship they're currently in, in those first 100 days, you can see an increase in liking each other. So this is when somebody's cheating? When they're cheating. Okay. Or when a relationship is... So it's about to start. Okay. They're flirting. Okay. They there's an increase in the amount of things that they like from oh, one from another. the other person. Yeah. Okay. And then they could they showed a graph where after at the end of the 100 days they get together. They're okay. officially they officially announce on their timeline that they're in a relationship. Okay. And then you could gradually see on the graph the likes going down. They kind of chill out a little bit. Because they're together, right? Yeah. Okay. And then shortly after that they break up. So it's then. So the number of likes are going up mm-hmm. as they're, they're not in a relationship, but they're just... They're becoming like, more acquainted yes. and they're flirting. Things are starting to 
to heat up to heat so up that was... so there, there's an increase of likes which makes sense right. and then there's a peak so the mm -hmm. peak of so the number of likes pick up before they engage they state on Facebook that they mm -hmm. are together yeah and then f after they make the announcement mm -hmm. the number of likes goes down yes right yes and things kind of cool down a little bit after they officially announce that so, they are together so you would propose what would you propose so well a lot like of, what have you learned from that uh well married people mm -hmm. were talking about it in terms of how should we behave when we're on Facebook if we're married? Okay. Should we really like someone of the opposite sex status a Somebody whole else. bunch? Yeah. Should we really, if we know our spouse can see it or whether they can see it or not, should we really um, <laughs> like like over and over and over again a specific person's status or pictures or videos or whatever it was just I think for people who are married they were coming from the point where it looked suspicious so it, one looks suspicious if you like someone a specific person's posts over and over and over again okay it was just so they were tying that together with what happens in those first 100 days it was just... <laughs> and then now it becomes an issue of if somebody clicks like, yeah. do they really like? So that or is it just they, they, made a, they just made an action with their finger and they click something? Did that, they really like it or is something going on their timeline they just click? That's where the problem was coming up is should you really do that over and over and over again because your spouse is probably going to assume that you really do like the person you're liking. So, so the word like means they, there's a, an affection. So every time you click yeah. like, you, that means you actually... Well, or just the fact, even because, well, there's so many different reaction buttons yes. now. So just the fact that you are reacting... Oh, okay. So, so the the, many the times. issue is the fact that you are noticing it, you are yeah. reacting, yeah. and that they are saying that actually from the evidence it actually is bringing people together and the more you react after a hundred days facebook is showing that they are these folks end up getting together you know and you know facebook has um more data has data a lot of data of like because there's a i think a billion people using facebook i think it's more yes. than a billion so they have a lot of data. They do. Yes. They do have a lot of information. That is a really complex topic. And I we could do a whole episode just on that. Yes. Just on the information they found. Because I think it, the more I talk about it right now, I'm probably just confusing myself mm -hmm. and confusing everyone else. But I would really love to dig deeper in the, into that issue and see, you know, what really happened because and the reason why that issue was even being brought up is because people are stating on mm -hmm. their divorce papers that Facebook was an issue oh really so so they're just saying Facebook people are saying Facebook and that not, was, not even was, cheating no and this is something that was happening a few years back in England Quite a few couples were stating Facebook as the reason, mm -hmm. but now in the United States, they've seen an increase. Of in people just saying, I'm Facebook. getting divorced because of Facebook. It's like, because mm -hmm. I know there was a time where people were, people were connecting with their high school sweethearts yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. So that was a, I don't know if it's still going on, but it was mm -hmm. a big thing with the um, senior citizens the uh -huh. the the older couples who would um, connect with somebody who they knew in high school, yeah. But they they had not been in touch for so many years, uh -huh. and now once they they rekindle uh -huh. their relationship, they actually start cheating. Yeah, and it's 
probably not just senior citizens. It's how old how old officially are you if you're a senior citizen? Um I don't know, sixty is or fifty five. Is it fifty nine? Something. Something like that. It's this was actually the high school sweetheart thing is something that actually happens to a lot of people of different ages. So it's it, yeah, it's definitely a, a problem. <laughs> it's definitely a problem, yeah. It, it really is. It really is because um, they say that it starts out with the private messaging oh. messenger. Yes. And then it just kind of gradually builds from there. They decide to meet in person, and then from that point on, it's pretty much, I mean, it's pretty much a, a gone case after that. But Cause, I don't want to say gone case, but it's. They have a lot of problems. And you know, work. I think one one time our pastor brought up that issue and he's like, you think, he's like, it's not a big deal that you, it's, it's like, it's not a big deal that uh, after so many years, you just came back and you picked up where you left. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's like, try living with somebody for 30 years and then it's a big deal mm -hmm. that you're still together with them because yes. now you've lived with them you've seen all their cockiness i mean everything is crazy and mm -hmm. you're still after 30 years you're still with them right so he was like yeah it's not a big deal that um you see someone that you went to high school with, with 35 years ago, ago and then you strike up a conversation exactly. just like you would have in the old day the good old days yes don't be surprised by that He's like, be surprised by the fact that you can live with somebody for 30 years mm -hmm. and still be in love with them. Yes. That is where the, yes. because if you can live with somebody for that many years and, and, still, and see them every day and when you're having a great day, they're there. But when you're having a bad day, they're still there bugging you. <laughs> and I mean, <laughs> that is where the issue mm -hmm. is. And um, that's why... Uh, Live Your Best Marriage, we love to encourage folks just to remind you that, hey, this is not, you're always going to be like, everything's going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But the, those, we're here to encourage you during those times when you are like, oh my God, what's going on here? I can't deal with her anymore or mm -hmm. I can't deal with him anymore. We are here to remind you that even mm -hmm. during those times, your marriage can be awesome and fulfilling. And actually, using creativity and prayer and all that and try to get yourself out of that mm -hmm. <clears throat> crazy situation yeah. is more fulfilling. Yeah. Yes. There's always a way to make it better. But also, we want to remind you guys that this is not therapy. We're not doctors. We're not psychiatrists. We're not trying to fix you. You no. don't need to be fixed. Yes. And your spouse doesn't need to be fixed. Yes. This is just a place where you can get encouragement to really just be reminded, I think. That, to live your best marriage. Yeah, to yeah. live your best marriage and that it is possible to in, have a happy, enjoyable long life together oh yeah as a oh, team yeah. oh yes it's that's pretty much it yes so um, folks we really enjoy having this podcast and um don't forget to subscribe we are on itunes or stitcher tune in or whatever you go and get your podcasts and uh we really love you to subscribe so that you never miss any of this podcast and if you're watching this on youtube just subscribe to our channel our YouTube channel and click to get you the notifications through YouTube. So folks, until next time, bye and God bless. Are you tired of being upset, lonely, feeling empty, or just plain frustrated with your marriage? And no matter how hard you try, you're not getting anywhere, just going in circles. No matter how much you try to make time for one another in your schedule, or how many times you say, I'm sorry, Pesa and I have put together 99 ideas to help you connect with that one special person so that things can start to be more like the way they were before everyday life got in the way and caused the two of you to drift apart. We want you to have 99 ways to show love to your spouse absolutely free. You can find it at 99waystoshowlovetoyourspouse.com. Because here at Live Your Best Marriage, we truly hope that the two of you can move closer together and enjoy the connection that comes from 
achieving a stronger bond. Again, that's 99 ways to show love to your spouse.com. That's the number 99 ways to show love to your spouse.com.